I can never breathe out of my nose. I've been stuffy for, you know, uh, 22 years now. So he wants to get a band back together. I said, that's fine, but it's got to be a garage band. There's not enough, you know, that used to be a thing. You got some friends, you set up the drum set, the amps, and, and you practice some stuff in the garage. Well, sure, it pissed off the neighbors because it was really loud, but that 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 was all part of the fun, you know? Now, uh, you just don't see that as much anymore. You, you, get, you get people, there's too much electronic stuff, they go out, there's DJs, you know, there, there's no more good garage bands that you can go see, see play. You, you know what I'm saying? Steve Wanner here from GetRebix.com, and today we're going to show you very simply how you can register your virtual machines into autopilot and we're going to make it very simple there's not going to be fancy automation we're going to dive into it so you can use virtual machines for all of your intune and autopilot testing no i mean it's got to be loud there's no point in doing it in the garage if the neighbors aren't bothered by it i mean what seriously get rubik's solving for the modern workplace Okay, we're on a little bit of a different machine today. This is my Bob Ross style background. Um, keeps me very calm. So I wanna talk about how you can get your, your virtual machines registered in autopilot. And we've covered a lot of this on the channel in a lot of different ways, right? Generally something very automated. I have my VM creation script we do, but I kinda of wanna take things very, uh, I'll say a rudimentary perspective. So I'm gonna use Hyper-V. Uh, if you're using VMware uh, Workstation, uh, any system you use to make your virtual machines, go ahead and make one to where it's just in a brand new out of the box state. And we're gonna start from there. Okay, so I went ahead and created this new virtual machine called Autopilot. I gave it today's date and I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start it up. All right, so once the machine is booted up, I would definitely recommend taking some kind of a snapshot or checkpoint in the beginning. I'm gonna call mine Ubi for out of box experience, but this gives us a way to go back if we make any mistakes. And uh, once it's registered, you can leave it registered if you just wanna enroll it again. You just delete it from Intune, roll back, and then proceed. But one of the benefits of virtual machines is that we get to make that checkpoint. So make sure you do that. Now, I've said this before, but it's important to remember that manually adding PCs to autopilot isn't a scalable solution. And it's all it also wasn't meant to be. It's designed for this, right? For testing, for putting a one-off PC in, um, you know, virtual machines. Remember to work with your hardware vendor to make sure they're set up to use the actual autopilot APIs, where as you procure devices, they'll post them for you. Um, but what we're showing here again is just for testing. Now there's two methods to onboarding a device to autopilot manually. Um, and one is a little easier than the other, but it does require a little more graph permission. So I'm going to show you both methods and this way you'll be all set up. So you can refer to the official link um, as far as uh, manually registering with autopilot goes, and I'll make sure that you have that below. Um, as far as doing it with uh, PowerShell, so you'll have that link there. Um, the next thing we have to do is right from here, we're gonna hit function shift F10, and that'll pull up our command prompt. So the first thing we have to do, because it's a brand new machine, is we have to install our package provider. Oh, actually, I totally did that wrong. We're gonna enter PowerShell, and we're gonna set the execution policy to bypass. Bypass scope current user. Okay, so that should be all clear for us now. So it'll let us execute scripts. Then we need what's called the NuGet package provider. That's where all the PowerShell modules and scripts comes uh, from. So uh, you wanna go ahead and make sure it's there. Install package provider, name, NuGet, confirm, false, force. Yep and that'll go ahead and install that for us. Once that's there, uh, we're gonna install the get Windows Autopilot info script. Now that's the script that's been around since the beginning and it's referenced here. Um, as far as folks using it, a lot of folks have turned to the community version. So I'm just gonna pull that up. Okay, so the community version is maintained by none other than our good friend, Andrew Taylor. 
and it has contributions from some other Microsoft resources out there. And this has basically a lot more to offer than the traditional uh, Get Windows Autopilot script has. Um, I will put a link to Andrew's site below so you can see essentially all the enhancement versus the original Get Windows Autopilot info, but it's a much more robust script um, and supports way more commands. So that's the one we're gonna use here today. So we're gonna install that script. Install script name, get Windows Autopilot info community, confirm false and force. Once the script is installed, we can run the command. So the way we register the machine, and the first way we're gonna show you is the manually like collecting the hardware hash and uh, exporting it to a CSV file. So we are going to do get Windows Autopilot info community. Um, and, and this is a good opportunity to add your group tag. Group tag is one of the parameters. So if I wanna add my M365 group tag, I can. The output file is where it's gonna place this hardware hash. So if this is a physical machine, you know, you'd probably get a USB drive. Um, on a virtual machine like this, you're, you're better off just putting it on a network share so that you can grab it and use it in Intune. And that, that's what I'm gonna do. So output file for now, I'm just gonna put in C uh, temp and we're gonna put uh, autopilot info.csv. Oh, looks like I don't have C temp. Uh, I'll see if I could just put it right on the C drive. I forgot it's a brand new machine. Okay, so that worked. I'm gonna open up Explorer so we can take a look at what we just made. If I go to the C drive, you'll see autopilot info.csv. That's got all our hardware data in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a network share and then grab it on my host machine. Okay, I have my C and my share folder and we're gonna paste it there. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shut down the machine. You always wanna shut down before you register with Autopilot. Okay, so let's go look at this share file here in our, uh, let's look at this Autopilot info file in our share here, uh, where I put it, Autopilot info CSV. Uh, we can open this with a notepad since it's a CSV file. Uh, if you're ever curious what the Autopilot identifier looks like, it is this, hardware hash, um, literally this. And the last thing is our group tag. Um, if you were curious and wanted to run it through a base 64 decoder, yeah, take a look what happens when you decode it. Uh, I can't decode all of it, but there's definitely some information about the computer in there. That's a virtual machine. You could see the UEFI revision. Um, sometimes you get a little more physical hardware. There's a TPM version. There's the CPU. It's kind of interesting. All right, a little side detour there, but we don't want to do anything with that file because we don't have to. What we're going to do is we're going to log into Intune. Okay, we're going to go to Devices, Enrollment, and scroll down past Windows Autopilot and click on Devices. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Import. When you click Import, choose the file. Well, we know what file it is. It's that autopilot file right here. And if it's formatted correctly, it'll tell you rows are formatted correctly. And then you'll hit import and it'll automatically upload with the correct group tag. So that's one way to do it. But I'm actually gonna back out of this cause I don't wanna do it that way. I'm gonna power the virtual machine back on. Now using the other way, you can skip all of that and just run the one command with an online parameter, right? Now you have to uh, approve the Microsoft Graph, I think it's the command line tools application uh, in order for the authentication to happen in your tenant. Basically, if you have high enough permissions, you can approve it. So this is good for someone who does have those privileges or if they exist in your tenant already. Um, but I'll show you the difference. So I'm gonna go back to PowerShell and we're gonna type get Windows Autopilot community, Autopilot info community, my bad. And we're going to add our group tag, which is M365. But now instead of an output file, notice I'm typing online. 
When I click online, that is going to call upon another module, which is the Windows Autopilot Intune module, right? And it'll download it for you if you don't have it. And that'll take that. I already had it here, but it'll download for you. And this will allow you to auth directly into the tenant and take the hardware info and post it right up into Autopilot for you. So I'm going to sign in. Okay, and you can see it's giving me real-time information. It's telling me um, serial number 0816, and it's waiting to be imported. So that means within a few minutes, if I go back to my devices, 0816 uh, should be here once it's done uploading. So I don't, I won't have to then go take the CSV, you know, uh, put it on the file share, move it over, post it manually, and the CSV. You know, if you wanted to, you can put a bunch of devices on there, but it's hard to collect the hardware hash across multiples. Um, probably doesn't really make sense for just the virtual machine. You're, you're better off doing it this way. Okay, so now that it says it's been complete, again, we're going to shut down the VM. And you definitely want to shut it while it's being assigned. Um, but let's go take a look now and see if we could find it. I'll hit refresh. And there it is, 0816, and it has the group tag and it's already pending profile assignment. You know, sometimes there are certain concepts that I'm asked to do a video about, and I think, well, should I do that? Or is this something that a bunch of people already know? Um, because it, it almost seems like second nature after you've done it a thousand times, but then you go looking around and maybe there's, you know, not good documented content or nothing really recently. So I have gotten this question, uh, quite a lot and, and hopefully um, it'll clear up a few things, right? And like I said, especially if you're doing a lot of testing, you have your own lab, it's it's a, it's a lot more difficult to, uh, it's a lot more difficult to test with physical hardware. It takes longer. So hopefully this will help you. And you see you have two ways to go about it. Um, when would you ever use the manual one? You know, it's hard to say. I'm sure there might be a situation, but it's always better to know. It's always better to know more options, know a little bit more about the process. So Hopefully that helps and we'll be seeing you.